How's it going, everyone? Hope you all are doing good. Hope you all are also in the festive spirit and also ready to close out the year as 2021 is coming to a close. And with that, I thought I would look back at some of my favorite games that came out this year and late last year as I'm also going to include some 2020 games as well. And overall, just look back on the year of gaming and talk about my favorite games that I enjoyed in no particular order. And overall, just have a fun time reflecting and talking about some cool games and maybe even some recommendations. Hmm? So yeah. Um, also, if you guys have been enjoying the content, I'd greatly appreciate it if you subscribed if you haven't already. Most of the people who watch aren't subscribed. I know most people say that on YouTube, but it's true. And seriously, it goes a long way and means the world to me, but it's only optional. You don't have to if you don't want to, and it's free. You can always change it. But besides that, glad you guys are enjoying the content, as I've been seeing, and it really means a lot to me. Anyways, time to get into this. My favorite games of 2021. Actually, really quickly before we get into the list, I want to give a few honorable mentions and also some games that I have just not had the luxury of playing. Starting off with that category of games I have not had the time to play, Halo Infinite. I have not played it yet. I have not touched the multiplayer or the campaign. Looks really cool though. I've heard some great things and I definitely will be checking that out soon. Um, next up, Hades. I own the game. I'm staring at it right now and it's shrink wrapped. I've just not had the time to play it. It's fun. It looks really fun. That's what I have to say about that. Returnal was the game I heard about. It, I didn't see anything about it, but at the Game Awards, I saw the gameplay, and now I really, really want to get that. Also, along with that, Demon Souls. I've not played that either. It looks really fun. A couple core PS5 exclusives I'm missing out on, but definitely will be checking out soon. Now onto the lightning round. Now, I'm doing this because these games have either just started or I don't have a lot to say on, or I just can't really give an opinion on just yet, but I am enjoying them so far, so let's go. Um, Crash Bandicoot 4, it's about time. Um, this game is not Crash Bandicoot 4, I'm pretty sure we already had that. But anyways, Crash Bandicoot 4, it's about time, is a great game. It's a lot of fun, it's very refreshing from the Insane Trilogy with a lot of new gameplay mechanics multiple characters to play as fun cosmetic skins that you do not have to buy you can just earn by playing missions super cool um really beautiful and overall a blast to play i really love crash bandicoot 4 it's about time far cry 6 just recently came out and i do not have a lot to say on it besides it's far cry and i do really like it I've not beaten it, and I really think because of that, I can't really say more besides it's just Far Cry. I can't really tell about the story and stuff that I can, like Far Cry 5, because that game is amazing. And I can go on and on about that game forever. I do not have that far with Far Cry 6 just yet, as I have not gotten super far into it. But Far Cry 6 certainly is a Far Cry game, and I really do enjoy it. Also, the new Five Nights at Freddy's. I mean, I literally just started it last night, and I have been uploading some vids on it, and I'm liking it so far. It's a pretty damn good game, even though I literally just started it. But, yeah, I'm gonna put it in the null category, because I don't want to put it on the list, because I just started it. However, it's a pretty cool game, and I have been looking forward, it, forward to it for a while. So, yes. <laughs> I own this game, I've played it once, I really should play it a bit more. That is Sackboy's Big Adventure. I, I don't know how I'm transitioning into these. I feel like I probably should have said the name first, but Sackboy's Big Adventure, I played on Christmas, I played one time afterwards, and I have not played it since. I don't know why. It's a really good game. It's really fun, and I love Little Big Planet games, and it's literally a Mario 64 Little Big Planet. Super cool. Great game, definitely need to pick it up next year. Also, as well, Metroid Dread. I feel like my opinion on this game is clouded as I am not super far into it. I think I'm in the second area and the puzzles really are getting to me. I do like it though. It is a fun maze. It is a fun Metroid game. I am used to it a bit. I've never beaten a Metroid game and I'm planning on making Metroid Dread my first. And finally, Avengers. This game, I honestly am probably going to put near the top because I've been having so much fun over the past couple weeks playing it. Really random. I played it last year. It was okay. The new Spider-Man update came out. I'm really enjoying it. Will that last? I don't know. 
but I do need to mention that as it has been continuously updated throughout 2021 at points and I have to say that it is technically a 2021 game and also late 2020 so hey I'm counting it. Starting it off with the first game I got this year and a really solid game Hitman 3. Now, I'm a huge fan of sandbox games like Minecraft, Gary's Mod, all that kind of stuff. I really like games like that. And Hitman is no exception. I've always liked the Hitman games. I've never gotten super into them until this one. As seriously, it is just the ultimate Hitman game in a way. Because this is the conclusion to the rebooted trilogy of Hitman, Hitman 2, and now Hitman 3. And I have to say that this is definitely the best time to get on the train if you have not already. And I mean, no pun intended because there is a train level. But um, this is the Smash Ultimate of Hitman, the Hitman trilogy. As you can play Hitman 1, 2, and 3 in this one if you own the other two, of course. And I love that. But just getting into the base game itself, I really enjoyed it. All the locations were really diverse and really fun. Like the skyscraper in Dubai, that one was really cool. A good a good start not my favorite it might even be my least favorite but still a really good one and secondly and honestly this one might be my favorite the Dartmoor mansion I really like this one I just love the theming of it it's a mansion in the UK with all of these British this whole British family and you're trying to they're trying to solve a murder and the, you can play as the detective and that gives you an advantage on getting all of your just your mission complete on killing the main owner of the mansion, Alexa Carlisle, was that her name? Um, and just all the secrets around the mansion and solving the mystery. It was overall a really fun time and I just love the scenery and really showing the beauty of this game. Like seriously, I really like the mansion and the bonus challenges and seriously, just all the secrets is just, it's a fun area. It's like Clue basically. I really like it. The Berlin nightclub was probably one of the most just, you know, what you expect. I mean, it's a nightclub, but it has a twist of it being in like an abandoned facility. And I do like that. And now, definitely the most unique, the Chinese city. I, 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 uh, Chongqing, China? I, this one is so weird. It's like a cyberpunk city. It is so strange. Again, this, this game takes place in modern times, but this, the scenery in this one is just so unique. And it really draws me in with... The whole story going around with these two people and they're like recruiting homeless people to test on them and create these sort of cyborgs and they have like sort of like embedded chips and stuff and the underground facility and the crazy lights and just it's so weird i love it this is seriously a great just unique experience and definitely one of the highlights in this game and then finally, the Argentinian mansion, another mansion slash vineyard. And this one is definitely the most beautiful. I really like this one and the unique underground James Bond bunker. And the story that this one tells as well is just super fun. And of course, the infamous Grape Crusher. How could you not love the Grape Crusher? But I like this one too. And finally, I mean, I said finally, but this is kind of more like the epilogue of the game slash the finale, the carpet, car, the, the Romanian train, super fun, basic, you go through the train, it just had a fun, epic conclusion to this trilogy, and I have to say that I really enjoyed all of these, and plus all the bonus content, and like I said earlier, you can play all of the other Hitman games in this trilogy if you own them and it seriously just gives you so much content to go for especially for platinum which i don't know if i'm ever gonna do that because oh man this game definitely has a lot of challenges to do and i really like it and i think that this game definitely is a great conclusion and really does bring a lot of content for years to come and just challenges and overall exploration and a fun solid hitman game and I'm really excited, really, really excited to see where IO Interactive goes with their new Project 007. And I'm seriously excited for that. Update, I was going to grab footage for Hitman, like the trailer and stuff. And oh my god, year two content? I was seriously not expecting this. I did not expect them to do this. More maps, more content, more storylines. This game is not over. But overall, I have to say that I really enjoy this game and definitely a great way to start off the year. As I said in the intro, some of the games on this list are not specifically from 2021. 
and one of those exceptions has to be Ghost of Tsushima. Oh man, this game is a blast. See, I didn't have the opportunity to play this last year as I was out of a PlayStation for most of 2020 until the end of the year. So, in the beginning of this year, I absolutely had to get this game as I've been hearing so much hype for it, and I just had to see what was up. And I have to say that I've not been it, but this game has been an absolute blast. I've been just going in and out of it over the year, but right now, I'm really saddled up to just beat it as seriously it has been a fun journey the characters you meet exploring Tsushima Island saving your uncle from the Mongols and the fun action this game is great you play as a samurai and with that there is honor so showdowns and fights are necessary not as much sneaking and honestly I like that it is definitely a blast and I'm really enjoying the characters but of course with me you know non skippable cutscenes are my arch nemesis however i'll make an exception with this game because it is good and i don't mind the cutscenes as much well for now until i have to replay it so i'm liking this game it's definitely a lot of fun and i really do enjoy the scenery and a lot of the uniqueness with it for example there is no hud or compass you have to have the wind guide you to your location or your waypoint on the map which is really cool the combat system i said was really fun doing showdowns the blood the beautiful visuals like seriously this game is great and i really have been enjoying it and i could definitely recommend ghost of tsushima also with 2021 recently we did get the ghost of tsushima director's cut on ps5 so you know that once i'm done with the base game i'm definitely going to be hopping in to see what that's all about so i guess technically this came out in 2021 you know or just count it. it's my list but i definitely have to say that ghost of tsushima is worth the journey and honor of the samurai. This was the first game that I got on my next gen Series X console, or current gen, I don't even know. But this was my first Series X game, Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Now this is a Norse mythology Assassin's Creed game. We went from Greek to Norse. Well, did we go directly? Yeah, I think we did. So we went from Greek to Norse, and I have to say that, wow, this game is pretty fun. It's a fun Assassin's Creed game. Of course, it is an Assassin's Creed game, so of course it is kind of similar to the other ones. But I have to say that I've been enjoying it. I do really like, you know, the whole Norse mythology vibe. Um, going to Asgard, I just did that. That's so cool. Seriously, there is a lot to this. Um, the scenery is pretty nice. Exploring Europe and, you know, going around as a Viking. And I love the raids where you can go and pillage and it's kind of a part of it. There's some grinding involved and it's kind of fun, you know. You just mindlessly do it, you know, put on some videos and stuff and do it. I don't mind it. It's fun. Overall, I have to say that I think the story for this game is pretty good. The gameplay is pretty solid. Overall, it is a good Assassin's Creed game and I definitely could recommend this, especially for $20 as it goes on sale a lot. Seriously, this game is not worth passing up because it's a solid game. Not the best of the year. I put it in the middle. I think it's a pretty fun game that I pick up here and then when I have nothing to play. Overall, I really like it. I think it's a pretty solid Assassin's Creed game. Also, now that I'm thinking about it, God of War went from Greek to North, North, <laughs> from Greek to Norse mythology, and now Assassin's Creed is joining it. But I mean, Assassin's Creed goes everywhere, so of course it was expected. Just a side note for this game, but you can actually skip the cutscenes in a really cool way. You can press B, circle, or whatever key on the keyboard, and you can skip lines. And you don't just skip the cutscenes, you can keep pressing it, and skipping and skipping, and just reading it really fast, and then moving on your way. I freaking love that. More games need to have this. Goes to Tsushima, RE7, I'm looking at you. Seriously, I love this feature. Add it to more games. Now! Now I gotta show some love here for Doom Eternal since this game has been a constant for me throughout this entire year. Like seriously, I've been playing this game on and off throughout this entire year. By on and off, I mean like literally like whenever I'm bored, I'd hop on this game. If I had nothing to play, I'd hop on this game. It was a constant. And I have to say that throughout this entire year of me spending hours and hours, like I don't even know how many hours, and not even being through the campaign, this is a long beefy game. And I haven't even got to the DLC yet, plus the Horde mode and the online mode. This is a solid game, and yes, I know it came out in 2020, but I just played it so much this year that I could not avoid it. 
And again, the DLC came out this year, and seriously, that DLC is just so, looks so cool. I'm really excited. And by the way, too, this did not knock off any other games. Again, they're not ranked, so I didn't knock off anything, so you don't need to be mad that I included this over some game you wanted. I probably didn't play it. Doom Eternal, I definitely did play, and I really like the gameplay in this one. I mean, 2016 Doom was awesome, and you get most of the guns back in this one, and you get a lot of new, just cool and unique abilities, and a lot more platforming. And I have to say, I love the platforming, because seriously, just dashing and double, I, I don't know, can you double jump this game? You can do the dash in this game. You can dash and climb on walls and platform, and there's all these collectibles, and it's really fun. It's a basic first-person shooter game with a lot of depth if you want to go there, and I really respect that. And I overall, I think that this is a very solid Doom game. And overall, I think it's a really just good shooter. It's a really good FPS, and it's just so balanced with the difficulty. It can be really hard at times, but also just really fun and relaxing, and I've just gone through so much in this game, just relaxing and listening to music and just hanging out. And I really like games like that. Seriously, Doom is just a game that I want more of. Even though I haven't even beat it yet, I know I'm going to want more of because I love games like this. There's a story if you want to find it, but you really don't need the story to not enjoy it. This is a good game, and I really enjoy it. And definitely, I can recommend it if you just want a fun game to play. It's fun. If you've been watching the channel for a bit, you might not be surprised with this pick. But seriously, I've been a huge ambassador for the Spider-Man games as I really love them. I think they're super fun gameplay-wise, and just overall great. And with the new sequel, by the way, I said games. Well, this makes it games now with the sequel to Marvel's Spider-Man. Spider-Man Miles Morales. And I have to say that I was super excited to play this, and really was the main reason I had to get a PS5, even though I know it was on 4, but I just wanted to play this game so bad. And it seriously held up as it was a really fun game. Not as good as the first, but a really fun Spider-Man game. And I have to say that gameplay-wise, it is definitely better in a lot of ways. And overall, it just brings a lot of new stuff to the table. And it really gives a new perspective while Peter is on vacation and you playing as Miles with his cast of characters and his neighborhood and his family and friends. And overall, just story, it brings a lot more to the table and really makes for a really fun experience. However, it is a lot shorter with it being around 10 hours and feeling more like a DLC with the same map, which of course is in the same city, but are all just feeling more like a DLC, which honestly I'm okay with, as it's seriously still so much fun, and the story is great, the gameplay is really fluid and solid, and overall it's just super sleek, playing as Miles, who's a lot of a younger kid, and the detail of like how he swings and he's still getting used to being Spider-Man, it's really cool. The outfits, the side quests with the friendly neighborhood Spider-Man app, it overall just brings a lot of fun content and really makes this game super replayable as I've played it a few times now and I have to say that nothing's stopping me from playing it again. And again. And again! But yeah, I really like it and I think that there's a lot of replayability and fun side content as well with the bases again and the friendly neighborhood Spider-Man app and the collectibles. And the story itself is really good. Not the best again, like I said, it's second to Marvel's Spider-Man. But... It is still super good and came out the end of last year. I'm counting it, like I said. But seriously, this game is really good. And the story really, honestly, it kind of almost brought, almost made me tear up at the end. I mean, it was pretty sad. And I think it overall had a really sweet message and really fun story. And the gameplay and overall just made it a nice, nice neat package. And really, you know, was it super exciting to get. On Christmas and also too if you have the deluxe version or whatever version you can also play Spider-Man remastered so you can go through that and Miles Morales and we'll just have a really super fun Spider-Man experience now as well with Spider-Man 2 that just got announced I'm really excited and probably just gonna hop back into the first two games until 2023 as seriously nothing beats being your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man Look, I said I wasn't going to rank these games, and I'm not, but this one I'm ranking number one. Because seriously, this was my magnum opus favorite game of 2021, and that is Resident Evil Village. Oh my god, I love this game so much. Where to start? So, if you saw on the channel, I did do a Let's Play, and I played it after that, and I just have to say that this game is incredible. I love it so much. Now, if you've seen on the channel, I've talked about Resident Evil a bit, 
and overall, I'm a huge fan of the series. I love RE1 through 4, the side games. 5 and 6 I enjoy, but they are more action-oriented and kind of give me like a different mood, you know? When I'm into those action games, I love playing those. They're a lot of fun, and also the revelations, and there's just a lot in this series. But with RE7, there's a bit of a soft reboot where, you know, every three games they went from survival horror to action, and in this, it went back to survival horror more, but in the first-person view. And I have to say that it was a very interesting experience, and I really enjoyed it. It was very scary at times, and overall just brought for a really fun experience. And I have to say that Resident Evil Village kind of goes for the complete opposite in a way. Now this one does a 180 with the theming with RE7 being in the Louisiana swamps, and this game being in like a European village, and it seriously brings a whole different vibe. A lot of gothic elements, and I really love that. It is just so interesting with the environments it goes for and it really does a 180 occasionally with a castle to a factory to I, just a lot of places the village it is a lot of fun and i have to say that it overall really was my favorite game of 2021 i know i'm not ranking the other ones but this one is my absolute favorite and the story was great re7 introduced us to the winters and this game greatly continues that with a lot of new twists and turns and overall stuff i was not expecting and seriously, I have to say that if you play that game and then this one, you're going to be in for an amazing story with a lot of twists and turns and unexpected moments and fun. And I have to say that I really cannot recommend these two enough as they're both just in one. You have to play both. They both do completely different things. RE7 is going for a more horror and this game's going for a lot more exploration with a gothic scenery and, you know, just a lot of grotesque moments. But overall, a really fun adventure game. And I have to say that I just adore these two. And I can't wait for a third one. RE9, this is going to be a great Resident Evil trilogy we're going to have here. And I really love the story in this game. The characters that it introduces, the crazy environments and grotesque moments and storytelling. It seriously just reels you in. And I was appalled at everything. And I was just, you know, so sunk in. I expected to beat this game in two weeks. I beat it in four to five days. I was just so sucked into it, and I seriously was so amazed. And I cried at the ending. I seriously did. It was such a sweet and amazing ending, and I really was not expecting a lot of the twists and turns going up to that, and really just brought for such an amazing ending. And I have to say that Resident Evil Village is can, cannot be stated enough how this is my game of the year. I love it. I cannot recommend it enough, and I seriously just tell you that you have to play this game. It is not horror. I don't want that judgment put on this game. It's not some cr little crummy horror game with all these little jump scares and stuff. There are some, but overall is a fine tailored adventure, storytelling, grotesque, fun experience. And I cannot recommend it enough. And you must play Resident Evil Village. And I have to say that it seriously just brought me s to tears. I loved it and I cannot recommend it enough. And I think I'm rambling here. But anything for me to talk about this game, I'm excited for. So, without a doubt, this is my favorite game of 2021. Anyways guys, that was my list. I hope you all enjoyed this video very much, as I did making it, and I seriously just did this on short notice. And I'm super happy about that, and it really just shows how hard I've been working and getting better at video making, and I just really want to thank you all so much for this great year on YouTube. I definitely have to say this has been the year that I definitely just put in the most work in content wise on videos, production wise, commentary wise, just everything. And I have to say that I'm just so proud of this year and you guys for supporting me. And seriously, next year is going to be my 10th year on YouTube. Oh my God. I'm so excited for that. And seriously, as I've been listening to Logic Lily and hearing the line, I'm no longer a seed. It's time to bloom. I seriously think that that's going to be the year for me next year where I'm seriously going to do my best to start growing the channel and doing just giving it my all as I already have been, but just even more. And I want to thank you guys so much for joining me on this ride. And I'm really excited to see where the next year brings us. And here's to another list next year, looking back on the 2022 best games of the year. But this year was a great year for gaming. And I'm really excited to go through the backlog of 2021 next year. <laughs> so you'll probably see some of those. But I definitely will make sure to play a lot more currently released games. And not late 2020 games. And making some exceptions. But hey, they had to be made. Anyways, I'll see you guys later. 
I really just hope you enjoyed the video and the content over the year. Thank you guys so much. I love you all so much. And remember, you only live once. See ya.